mentioned, uh, I think we had about over 10,000 people tuning in from around the world, you know, um, something about that Queen Elsa, you know, gets kids and parents from all over the world and just crazy. Um, but we're, uh, we're about to just give you some uh, cool suggestions of graphic novels that we read this year and we we're excited about. Um, maybe you read some of these, maybe you haven't, uh, but definitely we're gonna give you some suggestions to enjoy. Um, definitely check them out at your local library if you don't live in our area, but uh, definitely request them if you uh, think that any of these might be something you might pick up. All right, I'm just gonna post this on Facebook and we are good to go. Right on. Great, it's recorded for, for prosperity now. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I guess I only mess up a little bit. And just to answer you, Samarth, uh, we are presenting graphic novels that uh, for kids, teens, and adults that you might be interested in reading. Um, definitely, if you don't get, you're not into graphic novels, but been interested, these are some top picks that we thought would be great uh, for a wide variety of uh, folks. So uh, yeah, just tune in and uh, enjoy our presentation and maybe something might, you know, jump at you. If you're not interested in graphic novels, we also have uh, Star Wars trivia going on right now. So you could always check out Star Wars trivia instead. It starts at 11, the drop-in trivia. So um, I've been told from one of our big time Star Wars fans here at the library that he could only answer four of the questions. So <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty hard, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's for the true fans or hardcore fans, who knows. I'm, I'm not going to win that competition. I'm going to just stay here with you and answer <laughs> questions. Well, Dogman, if it's, it's already popular. I don't think we're going to be re reviewing any Dogman right here. But uh, since you're familiar with it, I'm sure you, you enjoy it. <laughs> Dogman is great, but I, it is one that I think everyone all around the world knows. But it is a great graphic novel. All right, one second here, and we will be live. Normally, for those of you who've been to our Comic Con, or you know, those of you have haven't, uh. You know, we, we enjoy the live aspect and having everybody come, you know, just thousands of people from all around the city. But um, we're just happy to have all, all y'all here joining us virtually for now. I know it's not the same, but we're doing our best to provide some uh, great suggestions and entertainment for y'all. We wish we could meet in person this year, that's for sure. But I'm glad that we're able to do something to, to still talk about and celebrate graphic novels. So yes, let's yes. get started. Um, I'm, my name is Helen Lutke and I'm a reference librarian at the City of Santa Clara Library. You may have back in the normal time seen me sit at the desk. <laughs> um, I'm also the graphic novel purchaser for um, adults. So um, I'm really excited to be here today. This is a huge passion of mine and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Hi everybody, my name is Danny Lay. I'm a uh, reference librarian here at the Santa Clara City Library as well. Um, I don't purchase the comic book, she does. However, I do enjoy graphic novels, comic books, and uh, the, the genre itself. Great storytelling has been made through comics. Uh, as you can tell in the world, if you watch the MCU or Disney drop their announcement with the new MCU, uh, comics are not gonna go out of vogue for a long time. So definitely get into comic books, people. It's great stuff. All right, 
So just as a note today, we wanna to say thank you so much to the Santa Clara Library Foundation and friends. They supported all of the programs that are going on today. Um, you may have in the past been a fan of their sales that they used to do every Saturday. Obviously during this time, we're not able to safely have those sales, but did you know that you can actually shop online um, from them from home and they will ship the books that they have to you? Um, we, you can go to their uh, website, lovethelibrary.com and we can put the link in the chat as well. Um, and they have their Amazon store that they sell from. So you could buy books and support the library from home as well as monetary donations of any kind to the foundation and friends directly supports programs like these that we would love to have the chance to put even more of them on. So just one last big round of applause for the Santa Clara Library Foundation and Friends. We really appreciate it. And um, so unfortunately, Miss Jody couldn't be with us today. She is our children's librarian. Um, she had other stuff to do, but she loves graphic novels so much that she wanted to make sure that the kids picks were available. So she made a short video on YouTube um, it's posted on our Santa Clara City Library YouTube, and it goes through her favorite picks for kids. Um, we can also post that uh, link in the chat as well for you. But just so you know, this panel, Danny and I are going to go over teen and adult graphic novels. If you are interested in kids graphic novels, please check out Miss Jody's video. It's really, really great. But we will get started today with our teen picks, and that's Mr. Danny himself. <laughs> Right on. So with my presentation, it's really just a short uh, review of what I've read and I really enjoyed. So know that I'm not going to cover the whole world of YA graphic novels or teen graphic novels, what have you. But I'm going to tell you, regardless of the distinction, uh, YA graphic novels, teen graphic novels are just great fic uh, fiction and reading as well. So don't think it's age, you know, centric. It's really um, stuff that, you know, anybody can read for uh, from adults as well. So my first pick is Cosmo Nights by Hannah Templar. So what I love about this uh, graphic novel, it's uh, set in a indisclosed future in a world that's similar but not similar to ours. Uh, basically, it's uh, almost like a futuristic medieval uh, uh, community and society where uh, knights uh, still joust. There are still kingdoms, princesses, kings, and queens. Uh, however, it's still so much set in a world uh, that's controlled in a very patriarchal manner. Um, and our protagonist in this story, her name's Pan. She's a mechanic. She lives in a small town. She wishes she can go out into space and in, in the world and be something more than she was, you know, kind of born into. Uh, she befriends a princess uh, who, in all princesses in this uh, world, have to get married off after uh, the knights joust and they are betrothed to the knights who are who win the joust. But the princess, her name's Tara, she really wishes she didn't have to get lo landlocked into this life she was born into. So uh, Pan helps Tara escape. Um, she runs away. Uh, Pan gets in trouble years later. Um, somehow she meets, uh, Pan meets two other knights who are all both women, um, but, you know, they have to hot conceal and fight for um, the honor of who they are and becoming who they are. So, you know, this really is a story of LGBTQ uh, characters, you know, trying to fight, uh, break away from, you know, what society has placed upon them in their identity and uh, really just, you know, um, explore who they are, who they want to be. Uh, this is a great story. I definitely want you to check it out. Uh, next page, you bring some more illustrations. Um, it's fun art, uh, really bright, colorful. And uh, there's a lot of humor, which I enjoyed with the dialogue. Um, it really doesn't um, make you feel like uh, you're going to be stuck uh, reading anything boring. Trust me, it's a page turner. I think I finished it in like less than an hour. So I definitely want you to uh, pick out this uh, book right here if you have a chance. Uh, next one, uh, Lunch in Future by Karen Gillen. I really love this graphic novel. Um, if you like uh, other series like the Unwritten uh, Fables, uh, maybe you read those. This is about uh, Arthurian mythology. And if you like that, the, the tales of King Arthur and his knights, 
Uh, basically, this is set in uh, kind of our common world. And somehow, some way, uh, the society of, um, of purists from the UK suddenly uh, called upon this, the spirit of King Arthur and brought him into us, this, our world. However, King Arthur is not who you thought he was. He's more of an e evil spirit. And he only wants the purity of the Britons to rule over all of uh, England. Um, but here, Bridget is this uh, old grandma-like person who happens to be a monster hunter. And she brings along her uh, museum uh, grandson uh, to join, uh, his name is uh, Dylan, to come along and fight these uh, knights and all the spirits. So somehow mythology, folklore from uh, Europe comes to life in this story and they go through great adventures. Uh, I really suggest it if you like that kind of things. It's definitely a page turner to me. Uh, I love it. Uh, next one. Now this one, something is killing the children. I, uh, when I read this, uh, Helen, I know you read this as well. I really thought, I didn't know if this was gonna be for just teens, but it's definitely for an older audi uh, teen audience. Uh, it's a little scary. It's, it's about monsters that are somehow um, kidnapping kids in these small rural towns. Nobody knows what's going on. Uh, the teens are disappearing. Uh, but somehow this mysterious uh, girl comes into this town and decides to fight the monsters on behalf of the town. Now, nobody knows who she is, and she looks a little suspicious. However, uh, it's a great story that just unravels as each page is turned, and you find out that she's part of this secret society of monster hunters. Um, art is gorgeous. The action is gorgeous. It's not so gory as you would think. So I definitely uh, think it's still safe for teens to read. Uh, maybe not children, but definitely it'll be okay. Uh, however, you know, reader discretion is advised. So definitely uh, check it out on your own. Um, one of my favorite graphic novels this is the expanded edition. It came out last year, but uh, George Takei, well known for Star Trek fame, uh, wrote this uh, memoir. Um, they called us enemies about his time his family was uh, interned uh, in an internment camp during World War II. Uh, it really breaks down his story, um, what the Japanese Americans faced in America as uh, they were uh, pushed to these camps because of uh, American distrust, uh, racism, you know, um, a lot of things that, you know, was going around xenophobia, definitely going around in World War II, but taken in, in you know, a very tender and honest portrayal where um, he shows that a lot of things were not, you know, clear, a lot of mistakes were made, but however, he made a life for himself. Uh, he showed his, the strength of different view, uh, sides of uh, the American people. And I definitely uh, think suggest this to, for anybody to read. Uh, it's a great memoir. Um, definitely check it out, uh, share it with your children, especially if it's uh, something that's hard to share, it's, uh, especially about World War II and how hard it is to share in the easy way. So uh, definitely want you to read this one. Now, Alienated by uh, Simon Spear. Uh, I love this, especially for a teen uh, graphic novel. This series is a limited series, so it came in one volume. Uh, it's about regular teens you know, living their lives in high school, but uh, it revolves around three characters who all have the nickname Sam, and they somehow, uh, you know, collide with one another in it when they discover an alien in the woods. Um, and they befriend this alien because the alien connects with them on a psychic level. And you find out that they all will share this, the, their own same thoughts uh, the actions they do, they know what's going on in each other's lives. More than just about connecting with the alien or an alien story, it's about teenagers trying to fit in, uh, having difficult family lives, whether it's through their uh, identity, either as uh, queer or not being accepted in life, or just trying to uh, move on um, also teen pregnancy. So there's a lot of things that go on in this book, but uh, it was brilliantly weaved through this tale of uh, interconnected thoughts and also sharing through community. So 
Uh, I highly suggest it. It's another great pick for me. Uh, definitely something that teens and, and adults can uh, relate to. Now here's some, just two picks of upcoming teen graphic novels and comics that I'm excited about. Uh, they're still coming out, but uh, definitely you should check out. Now I'll, I didn't mention too much of the commercial comics from Marvel or DC, but uh, I've been pretty excited about what's happening in the uh, world of Batman. Um, if you haven't been checking out, uh, they recently just dropped this whole series called uh, The Joker War. Uh, Gotham was just raided by Jokers, three Jokers, and uh, the citizens went crazy. So Batman was uh, overwhelmed, and somehow, some way, um, all his uh, assets were all stolen. So Bruce Wayne lost all his money, and it, it had to get redistributed for safeguarding. Somehow, some way, uh, Lucius Fox is now the controls most of Wayne Enterprises. And so the announcement just recently is that uh, the next Batman will be probably Lucius Fox's son, as you can see right here in the picture in the left. So big things are happening in the Batman uh, world. Uh, a lot of new characters are being introduced. I definitely want you to check out if you haven't all the stories that uh, have been released and what's coming up now. Uh, it's definitely going to change the world of DC. And the next one, my last pick. Um, I mean, I don't know if the last time you read Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but uh, a lot of great things have been dropping out, especially this one. So if you loved Old Man Logan, if you read that series, uh, this is something along the lines of that. Um, if you love Sin City, you know, anything Frank Miller, this is definitely up your alley. The Last Ronin, it's like set in an alternative world uh, and era where it's the future. New York's uh, been taken over by the Foot Clan. Um, and we're introduced to the last Ronin who happens to be the last uh, Ninja Turtle alive. Um, definitely, I want you to check it out. It's, this is an older Ninja Turtle. I'm not gonna tell you who it is. Uh, definitely pick up their first issue. It's been selling out like crazy. Um, uh, it's, it's a great tale. I, I was kind of sad I finished it early, so I read it two more times. Um, but I, I think it's going to lead up to something great uh, for the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, definitely check it out if you haven't read anything Ninja Turtle related for a long time. You don't have to read anything else uh, before to enjoy this one. So check it out. Okay, so it's my turn now. <laughs> These are our adult picks that I would recommend. Um, first and foremost has to be Chainsaw my, Man. My, my 2020 favorite, my 20, my year of 2020 was the Chainsaw Man year. Um, Chainsaw Man actually first previewed in Jump in 2018, but 2020 has been Chainsaw Man's year. Um, it is a, a manga like no other I have ever seen in, in my time, personally. It is a mix of comedy and horror and battle manga that is just so, so good. And this is the main character here, Denji, and he um, is becomes a demon, a chainsaw, the chainsaw man, and it's all about how he uses this power to kill other devils um, in the world. And it's so hilarious, but it's also like the the artwork is gorgeous. It is graphic, as you can see from these images here. But um, would highly recommend to adults. Um, I do think it's a great one probably my favorite manga of the year. The uh, artwork is just spectacular. And um, it just had a huge announcement that it will be getting an anime soon. And I am just absolutely stoked. Uh, I would definitely recommend this one for fans of like Vagabond or if you're a fan of Bleach, the, uh, both mangas, um, I think that you would really like Chainsaw Man as well. His oh hands are chainsaw, oh, it's crazy. His, his hands are chainsaws, like what, what else do you want? <laughs> But our next one is um, Blood on the Tracks. And um, I'm a huge fan of horror manga uh, in general. So this one is a great one. Finally, it's getting an English translation, which is super cool. And uh, this is just like a, a slow building horror that really makes you feel uncomfortable as you're reading it. It, it. it builds so slowly, you need to read the next one. So I'm so happy that this is finally in English so we can all experience this absolute horror together. <laughs> um, but it's, it's the story of a relationship between a son and a mother. 
and they have a very, very obscure and not normal relationship. And, and she loves her son so much and she wants to protect him and she wants to protect him from everything. And it slowly starts getting more insidious and it's terrible and terrible. And uh, just really great. The, as you can see from the artwork here, it's very photorealistic. It's really beautiful. There's a lot, there's also like watercolor artwork that the um, author does that is really incredible. Would highly recommend. I would say that this is for fans of like Drifting Classroom or I Am Hero, uh, two great horror mangas that I would also highly, highly recommend. Um, our next one is a graphic memoir, and this is Redbone, the true story of a Native American rock band. Um, I'm a huge fan of graphic memoirs. I think that they're a form of graphic novels that are just not paid as much attention to, but they really should be. Um, you may know Redbone um, without knowing them because their very famous song, Come and Get Your Love, is, and, and I sing it in my head whenever I say it out loud. So like, um, it got really popular with Guardians of the Galaxy when it was previewed in it. I mean, it's been a popular song forever, like don't get me wrong. But um, so someone decided, uh, his daughter in the, from the band, decided to that she wanted to talk about her father's story and so this is a graphic novel that someone else wrote about the story of this band and it's a really good preview um, of just like indigenous history in America as well as this rock band and as you can see from these images it's kind of written like a diary so it's a really interesting format really interesting story that I personally did not know that this song was written by what's considered maybe one of the only indigenous, uh, completely indigenous rock bands. Really interesting history, would highly recommend to check it out. So our next one is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. And you probably recognize the name Sarah Anderson because she's very famous from Sarah Scribbles, which is an online um, comic that eventually became a bound book as well. This is very different from what she did before. It's a little bit more mature, but in a hilarious way, not in like an adult way. Um, so it, this is the story of a vampire who falls in love with a werewolf. <laughs> and so it's Surprise. like- Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so it's their like relationship. And um, as you can see from these images, it's a lot of like short anecdotes. There's a, it's not like a longer story. It's a lot of these little funny ones. And um, it's a short, it's a quick read but it's really adorable and the humor is actually pretty funny. I mean, you can see from this, this one on the left-hand side, they're reading vampire books together and then he brings out Twilight and she starts, it was, a lot of the humor is really good. And it's a, it's a good book that I thought that Sarah Anderson really started to stretch herself out there. Um, so if you're a fan of Hyperbole and a Half or you do have like Sarah Scribbles in the past, I would definitely recommend checking this one out as well. And my final pick for um, graphic novel I think you should read is Welcome to the New World by Jake Halpern. So this is another graphic memoir. And this one is uh, really interesting because it's the story of a family who escaped from a Syrian prison and they were coming to America and they're so excited to be in America and to escape this world. And they come on the day that uh, Donald Trump went into office. And so they're faced with an America that they didn't know was gonna be like this. And so it's the story of an acclamation to America, uh, learning about American culture and also just escaping their past. Um, as you can see from the illustrations here, it's very beautiful. I really enjoyed it. And also it was just um, a good, it's a good story and it's a good like perspective that I didn't even think about. So I would definitely recommend this for fans of like March or if you love the best we could do, it's really similar to that. All right, so here's a couple of graphic novels that I'm excited about coming up for adults. The first one is of course, Tona Matagari. Um, finally, it's coming to graphic novel format and I'm super excited. Mizuki is the yokai like top of the top. And so this is finally getting a graphic novel representation. Um, if you aren't familiar with this, this is like a, a really good basis for Japanese folklore. So if you are a fan of Japanese culture or Japanese manga or anime or anything like that, this is a really good way for you to start to understand the background of Japanese folklore that is common in a lot of manga and anime. And it's really exciting that it's finally getting 
like a graphic novel and it'll be coming out this year, I'm sorry, next year, 2021. And so it's just a pivotal text in Japanese media that I would highly recommend as like a must read in order to understand what's going on in, in other manga and maybe even graphic novels beyond that. And you may recognize Mizuki's name from the very famous Showa, which I would also highly recommend as a critical text in graphic novels. And it wouldn't be a panel with Helen without <laughs> recommending Genji Ito. <laughs> Her favorite. <laughs> so um, Genji Ito is a horror mangaka from Japan, if you are not familiar with him. Um, he's my personal favorite. Um, I've never talked about graphic novels without trying to throw his name in there somewhere. Um, he had a couple of really great ones that came out this year. Love Sickness will be coming out next year in April. I'm really excited for it. And so Rasuki returns to his town, his hometown, because apparently there's a mysterious, very attractive man who is stealing girls. And so this is uh, another one of Genji Ito's horrific manga of He's really good at combining a, a horror with his writing that is a building horror as well as a horror on the page as well. That makes you nervous when you turn the page to see what's going to happen next and if it's going to be as scary as you think it is. Um, this is definitely for, for fans of Ito's other work and horror manga in general, but Ito himself is very inspired by uh, The Drifting Classroom, which uh, is, is another great just seminal horror manga text just would highly recommend. So that is all of my recommendations. Um, thank you so much for listening to us during this time. And uh, definitely check out right here with this slide, the other events that's happening today. Uh, next up at 12 will be the Star Wars costumes with the local chapters of the Five Burst Legion and Rebel Legion. Uh, they're really great at uh, bringing together uh, Star Wars fandom and creating some amazing replica costumes. So definitely check it out, learn some more. And if you're interested in making your own costumes, uh, definitely want to log in and uh, chat with them. Uh, definitely at one o'clock, uh, join uh, our local artist, Mai. She'll be doing a, a Comic-Con illustration panel that helps you draw our Comic-Con Hedgehog. We got to give that Hedgehog a name eventually. Uh, <laughs> you know, calling the Hedgehog, the Comic-Con Hedgehog, is not good for a driver's license. So, <laughs> but they'll also be, uh, she'll also be drawing Baby Yoda or the child from the Mandalorian. Or Brad, um, whatever you... And she'll, she'll also be taking requests for things to draw. So if you have something in mind that you would like for her to draw, definitely um, attend that panel. And uh, at two, we'll be having uh, our closeout, The Making of Forward. Uh, we'll have six uh, uh, animation professionals who work at uh, various studios like Pixar, uh, Lucasfilms. They'll be talking about uh, a forthcoming graphic novel that they are going to be releasing. And so they're going to be having a great presentation. I uh, definitely want you to log in. You'll have to sign up. So definitely uh, RSVP uh, through the link from our website, which is located right there on the card, uh, sclibrary.org slash comic dash con. Uh, RSVP for that. And all day, there'll be a escape room. Have fun with that. Uh, hopefully you escape. <laughs> but uh, thank you for listening to me and Helen talk about our favorite comics of the year, which is not all of them. We read <laughs> way more, but this presentation will be probably a couple hours long and uh, <laughs> we've got other things to do too throughout this Comic Con. We just love having the chance to talk about comics in any way at all. And just as like uh, another note, remember that there's trivia contests going on today as well. The Marvel DC one starts at 12 and Harry Potter starts at one. So if those are your kind of thing, um, oh, we have um, someone in the audience said that they are very interested in Alienated and Fangs. Thank you so much. We Thank totally you. Appreciate that. And then we had another attendee ask us if we had ever read Princess and the Goblin by George McDonald. I have personally not read it, but mm -hmm. um, I always love new recommendations and I would be happy to check that out. Thank you so much. Anyone have any questions in, or comments? Um, we would love to take it in the Q&A function. We'll probably uh, stay here until about 11.30 and then we'll hop off to get ready for the next one. Um, I will be on the 501st uh, panel. So see you there if you would like to uh, learn more about cosplay. 
Oh, another another person said that they loved the princess and the goblin. Well, All I, right. we're gonna it, have to. It's gotta it, happen. Now. We're gonna have to read this one definitely. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there's a lot of ones that I could uh, could definitely recommend. Uh, I was like, Carmen Marie Machando uh, came out with the Lolo Woods this year, and that was awesome as well. Just gonna throw it out there as a last second. Um, Nancy says, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy, for coming. We really appreciate it. Rashad, thank you so much for giving us that great recommendation and goodbye to Anonymous himself. <laughs> na, 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 Batman. <laughs> um, and, but also, before you all bounce, support your libraries wherever you're living at. Uh, your local library needs your support. They desire it. They're there to serve you. So definitely show uh, your appreciation to all the library workers who are working in to make sure you get your materials, get your questions answered, and definitely uh, know that we are waiting for you to get back into our buildings. We miss the people. We miss programming face-to-face. -face. Uh, but until then, just keep safe, uh, uh, be, be well, and uh, just tune in with us while we virtually distance with you all. Yeah. <laughs> It's better this way, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, my mom's here. Hi, mom. <laughs> oh, she, she here. <laughs> well, mom, she, uh, you can leave. You don't have to stay on. <laughs> no, you can't. You're welcome to leave. Any questions, we're happy to take, but we will be leaving at 1130. So thank you so much for coming, but we're happy to answer any questions. or If now or, or online, you can just go to our website and, and pop it in the field. We'll answer it too. But we hope to see you at 12 at our 501st panel. We would appreciate your continued attendance throughout the day at ComCon. All right. All right. I Thank you so much, everyone.